Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I want to show you how to install the Android TV build for your Raspberry Pi 3. And I will also show you how to sideload a few apps easily over network. Now this image, or this OS, was provided by Geek Till It Hurts. Down in the description below, I will leave links to his webpage and his YouTube channel. This guy is smart and he does a lot, a lot of great stuff with the Raspberry Pi and other single board Linux computers. So we're going to need to get into this and we're going to have to download a few applications. But before we do, I just want to tell you guys that this is far from finished. If you are expecting to boot up Android and have Google Play, you are sorely mistaken. This is a very early build of the Android TV operating system running on the Raspberry Pi 3. You will probably run into problems. Um, for the most part, it works very well, actually. But this is really meant for people who just want to test this build out. This is not a permanent solution to having Android on your Raspberry Pi 3. As of making this video, there is real no permanent solution to having Android on your Raspberry Pi. Let's get into it. First thing we're going to need to do is open up a browser and we'll head over to Geek Till It Hurts. GeekTillItHurts.com. Now he is awesome. We're going to go down here and click on the WordPress icon. And what this is going to bring us to is his videos. At the bottom of his Android TV for Raspberry Pi 3 video, you will see a download link. It is a MediaFire download link for the Android TV operating system that he provided. Go ahead and click on that. You may need to answer a question to download it. That's fine. If you've ever used MediaFire, you know how it goes. You can also head over to his YouTube channel, or I will also leave a link to the video he uploaded, and this will bring you right to the download. Go ahead and click that little button too. Next, we're going to need to get Win32 Disk Imager. Now this is the go-to software for flashing any operating system to your Raspberry Pi 3's SD card. This is very safe. There are no viruses, no malware. It is recommended by the Raspberry Pi company. So we have 75,000 downloads this week alone. Click on this little green icon to download. It's a very fast download and a very quick install. I also recommend you getting SD card formatter. Now this will enable you to format your SD card to FAT32 very quickly and easily. After you install an operating system for the Raspberry Pi on your SD card, and if you want to use that card for something else, let's say you want to put it in an Android phone or just load some movies on it or something, it will not register as the full capacity of the card. You need to format the card after you're done with the card using it. If you're done with the operating system that's on the card, you will need to format it with SD card formatter in order to regain the stock capacity. If you have a SD, SDXC card, which is larger than 32 gigabytes, I recommend using FAT32 format. You can download this by clicking on the page here. Very easy, works the same way. I have already downloaded the Android TV OS here. This is a disk image file. It comes zipped, and the zipped file itself is 226 megabytes large. When it's unzipped, it's 7.7 .7 gigabytes. So keep in mind it could take a second to extract depending on the speed of your computer. In order to e extract this, you're going to need 7-zip or WinRAR. And I will leave links in the description for you. Right click. I'm using WinRAR. And we can extract by clicking here. We'll extract it to another folder and you should see this image the disk image file, 7.7 .7 gigabytes big. I'm going to insert my SD card into my computer. I am using a Samsung 16 gigabyte SD card. I also have an SD card reader because I'm on a desktop. This SD card is fresh and it is already formatted FAT32. Go to properties to make sure. File system is FAT32. 
Open up WinDisk Imager after you've extracted and downloaded everything. From the drop down device menu here, make sure you have your SD card chosen. And you can find that by opening up a file explorer. My SD card is drive E. Make sure you have the correct one chosen here. It will be different on your computer. This is where we're going to flash the SD card with the Android TV image. Click on the blue folder and we're going to navigate to where we extracted the Android image. Mine is on my desktop in the Android TV Raspberry Pi 3 folder. You should see your disk image file, double click, and it's time to write to the SD card. Now this can take a lot of time. This is 7.7 .7 gigabytes. It needs to be flashed to the SD card. Click write, click yes, sit back and relax. You can watch the progress if you'd like, but it could take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to flash. Successful, we successfully flashed the Android image to our SD card. It's now time to take the SD card out of the computer, plug in your Raspberry Pi, and give her her first boot. So we're now booted into the Android TV interface. I have a keyboard connected to my Raspberry Pi. It's a wireless keyboard and mouse combination. As you can see, my mouse works in the screen also, but you can't click on anything. You need to use your enter button or your return button. Scroll down to settings, network settings, press enter. We're going to set up Wi-Fi so we can um, sideload some apps from our computer. I have not been able to get USB storage working, so I've been sideloading from my computer. Take a second to scan. Type in your password and you should connect to your Wi-Fi. Connected successfully. Now we are online. Press escape. Now you can see there's nothing installed. We don't have any apps, but we want a few apps installed. So what we want to do is find our IP address. We can do that by going to network, Wi-Fi, click on the Wi-Fi network that you are connected to, status info, and here is your IP address. Take a picture of it, write it down, do whatever you need to do to remember this IP address. Yours will be different from mine, so just jot yours down on a note of paper or take a picture of your screen. If you have two TVs set up next to each other, that's even better. We're going to move back to the PC now. We need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network that our computer is connected to. Okay, we're going to need to download an application. Now when I sideload apps, I use my terminal or my command line. But I found an easier way, and it will be much easier for everybody to sideload their apps. Open up your Chrome browser and navigate to sites.google.com forward slash site forward slash Amazon Fire TV utility app forward slash. This link will be in the description. You want to download this. Come zipped. You'll just need to download it and unzip it. So I have mine here, I've downloaded it, and I have unzipped it. It's in its own folder. I have the applications or the APKs that I want to sideload. I have a bunch here, I'm not going to sideload many here in this tutorial, but this will work for sideloading most of your apps. Open up the Fire TV utility that you just downloaded. Amazon Fire TV utility app, we're going to run this at the top. File, Settings. Now you can see I already have mine set up. This is all you need to do is type in your IP address. Yours is going to be different from mine. Save and close. Yes. From here, select. 
navigate to where your APKs are located. Mine are in my app, Backup and Restore. So I want to sideload the N64 emulator. So I will choose Mega64 and I will just click on sideload third party application. You may get this warning, wait a second, just give it time and it should connect and install to your Raspberry Pi 3. It is connected and it has sent the APK. It is now installing. I'm going to sideload one more app here. We're just going to do ES File Explorer. Sideload third party app. It will give you this warning. The system cannot find the path specified. Just wait. If you've waited more than I'd say four to five minutes, then it will not connect and you need to figure it out. You may have the IP address typed in wrong. There we go. I just installed the N64 emulator and ES File Explorer to my Raspberry Pi 3 running Android TV. I did it from my PC over network. Now they need to be connected to the same network so that your PC can see the Raspberry Pi. File, settings, type in your IP address. You should have no problems, should connect. We're gonna go back to the Raspberry Pi now and I'll show you we just installed those two apps. Okay, so I just left it exactly where we just left off. I'm gonna hit escape. And as you can see, we have ES File Explorer installed here. Now the N64 emulator that I installed does not show up on the front end there. So you go to apps and we have Mega64 and ES File Explorer. So that's it guys, that's how you install Android TV on your Raspberry Pi 3 and sideload apps. It's very simple, easy, easy, easy. You need to be connected to the same network as your Raspberry Pi. You also need to be using HDMI for this to work. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. If this helped you out at all, help me out. Hit that subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up. Like always, thanks for watching.